Interest rates coming down should be a very positive for the equity markets, uh, but uh, they will not arrest a, a recession very quickly. In fact, if consumers and businesses know that interest rates and maybe prices are coming down, what will they do? They will wait. Inflation is unwinding much faster than we're seeing in the traditional indexes. Right now, the CPI is at 3.1, but uh, by other metrics, we're seeing prices fall. Now, we're not sure if the carry trade has unwind completely. JP Morgan is saying uh, we're halfway there. So perhaps we'll see some more volatility, but uh, I do believe that the Fed now is on high alert. In this video, Kathy Wood breaks down the recent market volatility and uncovers the key reasons behind the sluggish movement in crypto and other markets. She points to interest rate hikes in countries like Japan, where the Bank of Japan recently bumped rates from 0.1% to 0.25%. This has triggered a ripple effect causing a sell-off and margin calls as those who borrowed cheap funds from Japan now face higher than expected interest payments. Amid this turmoil, anticipation is building as investors await the next FOMC meeting on September 17th and 18th, where a rate cut could potentially spark a market rally. Kathy notes that rate cuts are typically positive for the market and risk assets, setting the stage for a bullish run. As we bring you more clips from the video, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an update. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Uh, because uh, the stock market seemed to be encouraging the Fed to hold tight, higher for longer, make sure that inflation was out of the system. And as you know, we've been saying for quite some time that uh, inflation is unwinding much faster than we're seeing in the traditional indexes. Right now, the CPI is at 3.1, but uh, by other metrics, we're seeing prices fall. And we would not be surprised to see prices fall uh, a little more broadly as the consumer weakens. Now, why is the consumer going to weaken or continue weakening? Uh, it, we believe it's because corporations are losing pricing power. And in order to salvage margins, they're going to be doing two things. They will be laying people off and uh, they will be uh, accelerating moves to increase productivity. So the unemployment rate will go up. That certainly uh, is getting the Fed to change its spots as we're listening to Chairman Powell. And I think now that household net worth being hurt by the stock market going down is another reason that the Fed is uh, going to relent. Now, one uh, last thought here. Interest rates coming down should be a very positive for the equity markets, uh, but uh, they will not arrest a, a recession very quickly. In fact, if consumers and businesses know that interest rates and maybe prices are coming down, what will they do? They will wait. Now, the market in its wisdom, uh, we believe, is alre already understands much of what I have told you. And so we do think uh, that lower interest rates, uh, when, this, uh, when this carry trade is completely unwound, that lower interest rates are going to be uh, the defining factor in terms of a rotation in the market uh, away from a very concentrated group of stocks to a much broader based group of stocks. And as I just uh, mentioned, uh, innovation solves problems. So productivity gains are certainly uh, what we believe is going to happen as AI proliferates throughout the global economy. In other news, Gareth Soloway, chief market strategist at Verified Investing, sat down with David Lin to discuss the latest on Bitcoin. Gareth is bullish on Bitcoin, especially with an anticipated Fed rate cut on the horizon. 
He explains that as investors shift more funds into stocks due to the liquidity crunch caused by rate hikes, crypto assets like Bitcoin have taken a hit. However, Gareth expects the upcoming Fed pivot in September to be a game changer. A rate cut could flood the market with funds, potentially pushing Bitcoin to $74,000 and beyond to $100,000. Gareth also emphasizes the importance of technical analysis over market sentiment for long-term success with Bitcoin. Now, let's dive into more of Gareth's insights. Yeah, and you can see it right down here. We have we have the Nasdaq, which which again has continued to go up a little bit, um, but the uh, the Bitcoin chart has much more kind of chopped sideways to lower. Yeah. Um. And, and again, what I think is going on here is that the money being pulled out. A lot of this is so you have the highest risk in the market, which is crypto, right? And so there are investors that are saying, "Hey, listen, we're getting nervous about the market. We're getting nervous about risk assets." We think that NVIDIA and these stocks, these mega cap tech stocks are still the place to be. So money, I think, is rotating over and you're seeing and you're seeing Bitcoin suffer. Um, we didn't see. Now, listen, one thing I will say is Bitcoin bottomed out recently at around forty nine thousand the same day as the, the August 5th low on the stock market. So there is still some correlation, but there's no doubt that we've broken down on that. And I think it's because the stock market has performed so well, it's sucking up so much of that money that would go otherwise into crypto. What do you, um, how do you interpret this? We've seen lower, lower highs, lower lows ever since the beginning of the year. Yeah. So, so one of the things I think is fascinating is that when, when we had that big dump on August 5th, which again was when the NASDAQ was down over 5% early in the day, um, we actually touched on Bitcoin, the spot ETF approval high before we had that 20% correction in Bitcoin, right? So we actually retested a technical support level. It was resistance. We broke out above it. We've now come back and retested it. In addition, you have this parallel channel, right? So this parallel channel, when you have a big move up like this, this is actually what we would refer to in technical analysis as bullish consolidation. Basically, price makes makes lower highs and lower lows, but it stays within the up move, which was from this low here all the way up to seventy four thousand. And so, actually, you know, as long as you'd stay within this parallel channel on a closing basis, this is actually a bullish chart for Bitcoin. And it does make me wonder if the stock market starts getting weaker and investors start to say, "Hey, listen, maybe we don't want to be in the stock market quite as much." Does Bitcoin see money flow? Because as you mentioned, it, it has become uncorrelated. Maybe money was flowing out of crypto and Bitcoin into the stock market. Maybe it reverses a little bit. And so I would actually be, as long as this parallel channel holds, I would be bullish on Bitcoin here. What's the uh, upside target you see for Bitcoin in the short term? So you got to respect the channel. So 69,000 right up here. Um, you know, again, what I do as tech, a technician is I look at the history of it and we can see every time it hits this line, it pulls back. So at least in the short term, if you hit 69, see if it pulls back. If it can break through that, 74,000 is a, a minor stopping point, which would be the all-time high. And I think you actually go quite a bit higher than that. I would even dare say that that it wouldn't shock me in the next year or two. Um, and I know Bitcoiners would love to hear sooner, but but I do think 100,000 is definitely on the radar for this asset. I do think it it slowly is becoming a risk asset here um, or um, um, essentially it's becoming a asset that that is not as correlated to um, the stock market as, as more so, so gold. I would say more so gold. Downside risks, Gareth. We always have to be aware of the downside. So this orange line that you drew, this support line, um, can we say that if it touches, let's say, below 52,000, then we're entering a new bear market or it's going to have an even further decline? Yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought up the downside because investors have to be aware that there is downside risk here, right? So so if the markets, and this is something we saw, so we, we look at this dump on Bitcoin that took us from 70,000 down to 49,000. First of all, that's a massive drop in basically two weeks. Um, so investors have to understand that if you do break below and have a, a daily close below this level here, this parallel channel, it does open the door to seeing some major downside. And if we took out 49,000, I would start to say, okay, well, your next stop would be your 20% low correction from the spot ETF at 38,000, 39,000 area. So, so again, just understand that it Bitcoin seems to have a little bit of this gold sense where it does better when the stock market struggles a little bit, but it also still can get panicked 
investors can get panic and still dump it out when there's all out panic as we saw. And by the way, gold sold off that same day as well when we saw the stock market and Bitcoin collapsing. So, so when panic hits, all assets get sold. People ask questions later, they just dump it at that point. So I would be very aware of that. And again, this is where technicals come in, is that if you do see a break of this area, you just step aside, step aside, let the dust settle and then reevaluate. You might be able to get it at a lot lower level. Phasing downward. I wouldn't call it particularly bearish. I wouldn't call it a particularly like a dramatic bear market, but it's just been going down over the course of the last year. So why, why, why are we seeing bullish indicators? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what, in technical analysis, when you have a sharp up move like this on the chart, and then you kind of go into this period, what's happening is that it's had a big run. What happens is psychologically, some investors say, wow, it's gone up so much. I'm, I'm a little nervous about Bitcoin. Maybe I'm not a hodler out there. So you have some sellers that come in, right? But when you have, if it was only sellers, price would collapse back down. But even at the current level of between 50 and 70,000, we're seeing buyers coming out of the woodwork and meeting them here, right? So mm. even though you had this huge run in Bitcoin up here, yeah, there's some sellers, there's sellers coming out, but there's also buyers, buyers stepping up. And that creates this kind of equilibrium of buyers and sellers, which again, after a bull run is really impressive because you're not getting just all sellers like, oh, let's just take the money and run. There's still buyers that are willing to step up. Now, eventually, as the buyers are willing to step up, eventually the sellers get exhausted of selling. There's all the people that want to sell. They sold, right? So what happens then is if buyers are still willing to step up and eventually the sellers that wanted to dump, dump, what do we get? We get the breakout up to the upside. And that's where you get that next leg to the upside. So that is a bull. If you're a bull, that's what you're looking for on Bitcoin is that those sellers finally mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, I've unloaded what I wanted to. There's no more sellers. And because the buyers have held price so close to the highs, it then gets its next bull run. And once it breaks the highs, all new buyers come in. They start chasing to the upside. But again, as a trader, like, like I think this is the big differential is that there's so many investors out there that they're just like, I'm just going to go in and let it do its thing. Much more, I'm as a trader where it's like, listen, if it holds this range, then it's good. We're fine. If it breaks it, then I got to stop out. I got to take a loss. I'll take a small loss. I'll regroup and I'll look to buy it lower at a much better price once the chart tells me that's doing it. But right now, the chart still remains bullish. That's a wrap for today. What do you think of Kathy Wood's market analysis and its potential impact? Do you believe we'll see a strong market rebound once the carry trade has fully played out? And how do you feel about Gareth's bullish outlook for Bitcoin, especially with the anticipated rate cuts in September? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Share your comments and observations below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others. Thanks for watching.